In the last video, you saw my local voice assistant do this. Do you have a tool to check NFL scores? No, I don't have a tool for checking NFL scores. Do you want me to make one? Yes, make a, a tool to allow you to do that. I've started creating a tool to check NFL scores in real time. It should be ready soon, and I'll let you know when it's complete. So it triggered another workflow. It's creating Cal a tool, and it'll automatically make it available for Cal to use. We'll check that out in a minute. I've created ESPN Get NFL Scores. I can now check live NFL scores for you. Let's try it. Check the NFL scores. The Buffalo Bills are leading the Cleveland Browns 23 minutes 20. The Rams lost to the Seahawks in overtime 38 minutes 37. Would you like me to check a specific game or team? Check the Cowboys game. The Dallas Cowboys lost to the Lowe's Angels Chargers 34 minutes 17. Angels. Would you like me to check another game or team? How awesome is that? Cal just created his own tool. So Cal, my voice assistant, built his own tool and then used it immediately. No coding, I just asked him to do it and he did it. It's insane. So how does it actually work? That's what I'm gonna show you. We're gonna open up the hood and look at how this works. A few weeks ago, Network Chuck dropped a video on how to connect N8N to Claude code using an SSH node. And when I watched that video, I went, mm, how can I use this? How can I build this into my local assistant to give it superpowers? So thank you, Network Chuck, for the idea. And what I've done now is use that method to allow my local voice assistant to create its own tools. But there's so many more possibilities than that. But today we're gonna to look at the create tool function. First, why does this architecture matter? Well, I'm running Ministral 3, an 8 billion parameter model. I was running Quen 3, but Ministral 3 came out recently and I've tested that and it's an absolute legend at calling tools. It's working really well. But if I wanted it to one shot a working N8N workflow, probably not. So Ministral 3 is like the router. It's taking my requests and it's routing to all the different tools that it has at its disposal. And one of those is using Claude code through the SSH node. So I have the local model acting as the router. My voice never leaves the network. And then when I need to pull in the big guns, I have Claude code or for that matter, Gemini CLI at my disposal. So let's open up the workflow and see what it does. So this is the workflow right here. We'll zoom in in a second, but basically what it does is it receives a request. It asks Claude code to build a workflow. It activates that workflow, it tests that workflow in a loop and continues to test uh, for three tries. If it can't fix the workflow in three tries, it lets me know that it didn't work and I need to intervene manually or it's successful and announces that it has been successful. But let's look at this through an execution. So this is the execution from the previous video where it created a workflow for getting NFL scores. So how does this work? First, there's a webhook that my voice assistant, Cal, uh, can trigger. And within this webhook, there's instructions to Cal on how to use it. So these get exposed through MCP to my voice assistant, as I explained in the previous video. And this is the instruction to the LLM on how to use this tool. So use this tool to create new tools for yourself. Here are the parameters, it needs a description and needs some additional requirements. And here's an example of how to, how to call that tool. Okay, so in this case, Cal called the tool and sent this description. So this is the description that Ministral 3 came up with. It says, check live scores, search the web. It should get live scores for a specific game as well. Current score, provide league standings, blah, blah, blah. And it said, use web search for real-time data. So that's the request that came in through the webhook. And immediately after receiving the webhook, 
there's a response back to Cal saying that, okay, I'm creating the tool. I'll let you know when it's done. So that's what Cal said. I'm working on the workflow. I'm going to let you know when it's done. And then this continues on to Claude create a workflow. So this is where the magic happens. This is the idea from network Chuck. This is an SSH node that's calling Claude code. So it's connecting to my AI server and it's running a execute command. And this is the command. So first read this workflow builder seed. So this is a prompt that I built to explain how I want the workflows to be built. And then it passes the description that we saw from the webhook and the requirements and passes that into Claude code command line. So Claude, I want it to use a sonnet model. We're in print mode. I want it to output in JSON format and here are the tools you're allowed to use. You can read, write, web search, web fetch, all that stuff. So this is what it looks like but when inserting the, the variables. So here's the description, the requirements, pipes that into Claude code and Claude gets to work. And then it outputs into this node which turns it from a string into a JSON structure. So here's a Claude response, success, no error, how long it took, number of turns, and uh, the result. So perfect, I've created the NFL scores workflow. Here's the completed workflow, and it puts the JSON uh, workflow in this fenced block of code here, which was part of the instruction that I gave it in the, in the prompt seed. And then this parses out that JSON fencing and also an announcement fencing at the bottom, which is what we want uh, Cal to say in the end. And it puts that into workflow and announcement. So now we have the workflow, ESPN get NFL scores. Here's the first node. It's a webhook node and it's triggered through uh, the ESPN get NFL scores, which follows the, the schema that we want, where the name is the same as the path for the webhook. Okay, so that's the workflow that Claude came up with. And now there's a call to the N8N HTTP API. So under workflows, it's gonna create a new workflow. So we send it a, the name, the nodes, the connections, the settings, and that workflow that Claude just created and the input, all this gets put into a post request and creates the workflow in N8N. And part of the instruction here as well is to make sure in the settings, that it's available uh, in MCP. And this is crucial in allowing Cal to auto discover this tool. It has to be available in MCP. So Claude has instruction to make sure this is always set to true. So the workflow gets created in N8N and then it gets activated. So the workflow ID that it created gets put here and you do a post to the activate URL and that basically publishes it. So it's available. So once it's available to test, this is where we get into the loop of testing. So we set a counter, we say a retry counter starts at zero. We don't want to get this into an infinite loop. And so we give Claude three tries and if it doesn't work, it errors out. So we run another Claude command and we connect to the same session. So this was another point that Network Chuck made in his video. You want to connect to the same session you were connected to before. So all the context that Claude had for creating that workflow is again in this node where it's going to test the workflow. So it grabs uh, from the destringify 
node the session ID right here. And it pulls that into the Claude command and you do dash R to resume a session. And so the workflow is now published, test it and ensure it's working as intended. If it is, respond with only okay. If it's not working, fix it and respond only with the JSON, the updated workflow. And also update the file because I save these files to a folder as well. So Claude goes and tests that workflow using curl command and then we'll output after the test. And in this case, the result was okay. So Claude said it's working as intended. I've tested it. I got the result I expected and it just said, okay. And now we do an if statement. So if it's equal to okay, it's a success. And if it's not, it needs more testing. So if it needs more testing, we parse the response again with the updated workflow. We update it, we activate the, uh, the new version of that workflow. We increase the counter and then we do another if statement. And the if statement is if the retry counter is less than three, then continue the loop. If not, then we're gonna tell Claude, hey, look, you had three attempts to get this working, but you've not been successful. So respond with a brief message, what the issue is, and then we'll have to intervene manually. And it sends that message to a webhook announcement that Cal has available. So Cal has two webhooks right now. One is the announce. So when you send a message, to this announcement webhook, Cal just reads it aloud and you don't have to prompt it. So you could be making a coffee and Cal says, hey, that uh, workflow is not working. You better go in and check it out. And then the other webhook that's available to Cal is on the successful attempt. It triggers the reload tools webhook. And so this tells Cal that there's a new tool available and this is the name. Here's a message for you. And the room name, that's just where uh, Cal is connected to. And so this triggers some code in Cal as well to re-look at all the MCP tools available through NADN. It gets that new tool information and now it can use it right away as you saw in the demo video. So that's what's happening under the hood when Cal is building himself a new tool. But let's zoom out for a second. This isn't about replacing the local LLM that Cal is based around. This is about augmenting his abilities with a big brain of Claude code to pull off things that a local LLM running on 12 gigs of VRAM just never could do. So it's best of both worlds situation where the local LLM in this case Ministrel 3 is doing the quick routing, deciding which tool to use, responding to some general knowledge questions, searching the web for some information, and then the big guns get pulled out when needed through Claude code. And because we're doing this through SSH nodes, we can call whatever tool we want. So remember that NFL fantasy report workflow in the last video? Let me show you that quickly. This is that weekly report workflow. And in here, it's connecting to my Yahoo API through all these HTTP requests. It's merging that information together. And here it's sending it to Gemini CLI through the same methodology that we used in the other one with Claude code. And this one we're using the free Gemini CLI and saying, hey, you're a fantasy football analyst based on this data, produce a weekly report. And it does that and formats it into an email and emails it to me. And then again, we call that announcement trigger to say, hey, the report's done, it's in your inbox. So this just unlocks so much potential and the voice assistant that's running local now is just an interface to all these tools you can create to connect with your local services, to cloud services, to build code, to build its own code, whatever you want. So what's next with Cal? 
I'm gonna give them long-term memory through a Memento SQL graph database. I've shown this in a previous video. Uh, I have the functionality there. I just need to give Cal the tools and tell him how to use it so he can store things and recall things on demand. And then to continue building out these other workflows. And I'm really curious what ideas you have for different tools that Cal can use and workflows that you create. I'm gonna share the ones that I've already created. So check them out in the GitHub. And a big thanks to Network Chuck for this idea of connecting N8N to Claude code through SSH, because it's really unlocked a superpower for my local assistant and I'm super stoked on it. So thanks for that. And thanks to you for watching the video and we'll see you in the next one.